And the survey says... We appreciate you so much for watching. What's up everybody? This is actor Darren DeWitt Henson and you're watching The Michael Finkley Show. Stay tuned because there's a whole lot more. On an all new Michael Finkley, actor and entertainer Jevin Smith is with us. He tells us how he got started in acting and he tells us how he got his family involved in the industry as well. Next. If I can make it through the night, just to see a brighter side. Cause I've been working all my life just to make Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Michael Finkley Show. Thanks for joining us today. Now, y'all, I remember many, many moons ago, maybe in like the early 2000s, MTV had this really cool show called Becoming. This is where ordinary people became their favorite musical artists. So they were like Janet Jackson, Britney Spears, Eve, and it continues and continues. So I remember this one episode, right, where they um, picked these two dudes, and one was P. Diddy, and one was Usher. And they performed their hit, I forget the name of the song, I think it was Girlfriend or I Need a Girl. Yeah, I Need a Girl. There we go. I knew it would come to me. Um, I would have never known 20 some years later that I'll be interviewing this dude. <laughs> I'm like, that is you. Oh my gosh, I loved you on that show, right? And his career has flourished from there. And he's here to tell you about it. Of course, I'm talking about Jevin Smith and what a career he has thus far, including his family. He tells you how they became a part of the industry as well. So don't do a way thing, fam. Back in a moment. Coming up, Jevin Smith is with us. Don't you go away. Back in a moment. My name is Malia. My name is Faith. You are watching the Michael Finkley Show. On the next Michael Finkley. Famous is here. He chats with us about his influences in music, his amazing single 90s R&B, and he performs. Next Finkley, Monday. Hello everybody, it's Finkley from the Finkley Experience. We're an educational consulting firm that specializes in first generation education. So we assist students with their college and career endeavors. We train school administrators on the state of first generation students. And also we partner with colleges and universities to assist their first generation population for easy transition from high school to college. So if you're looking for a presenter or a speaker that presents on these topics and so much more, visit our website at thefinkleyexperience.com and learn about all that we do. We're looking forward to working with you. Everybody, welcome back to the Michael Finkley Show. Now, my next guest, he is an entertainer here to entertain and inspire you. And I promise you, he is not Troy from Way to Exhale. He is Javin Smith. Javin, thank you for being with us today. Oh man, thank you guys for having me. That is so funny. Thank you for thank you for clarifying that. Let me clear it up. Everybody for thinks I'm him. I'm not Bubba or Troy. <laughs> I had to clear it up for the people. I had to clear it up for the people. Oh my word! <laughs> I was I was trying not to laugh when I was saying it, but yes, we had to clear it for the people. Thank you so much for being with Thank us. You. Thank you for contributing you. entertainment as you do Thank in your own you. special way. So I must ask Thank this you so question. Much. You're very welcome, mm -hmm. sir. I, I must ask this question: Did you find entertainment, or did entertainment find you? Oh. That's a good question. I guess what I, I would say, I would say it found me. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I, I, uh, I both. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with both because the way I was born, you know, I I felt like it was something that always called me. But I went to a performing arts high school, 
And I went to school with a lot of celebrities. Um, Omarion went uh, to school with me. Um, he was one of my good friends. Ty Dollar Sign, um, um, Robert Richard, who played on um, uh, what is this stuff with, with Kyla Kyla Pratt? He plays on a lot of things. He was on the the show with Megan Good back in the day too. But I went to high school with a lot of those people, and I would ask them. I would say, you know, how do I get in entertainment? You know, and they're like, you got to get an agent. You got to get an agent. And I'm like, what does that mean? How can I tell my mom? Uh, you know, to give me an agent. And, um, you know, I, I just started seeking for myself. So after after high school, um, then I just really started going after it. So I guess I would say I went after it more, but it was something that was always calling me. But I've always been, you know, comedic and things like that. I used to love to entertain. I DJ, I've been DJing since I was 10. So, um, you know, but I wanted to do other things as well in the entertainment industry. Yes, I hope that answered your question. It so, did. You've okay. been DJing since 10? Yeah, yeah. I did my first gig. I was probably approaching 10, but I would go with my uncle. He was like a famous DJ in Detroit, Michigan. He moved to L.A., and I would go to gigs with him, and we would do, you know, weddings and big parties and stuff like that. And then he was like, all right, I don't want to do this no more. And I'm like, perfect. Well, let me do it. And I started doing um, gigs for people at my schools. I was like in the sixth grade, fifth grade, and you know, making seventy five dollars, then one hundred and fifty, and then you know, doing major, major gigs. And I like since that time, I've done stuff for Big Sean, Anthony Hamilton, Bernie Mac, um, rest his soul, um, and a, and a lot of other people. So yeah, oh, wow, you was making it do what yeah. I did. I was, <laughs> still am. <laughs> I still, yes, you go. There you go. And I remember the first time we had this discussion before we got started. I remember the first time I was introduced to you. It was on the hit um, television show on MTV, Becoming. And you, along with a friend, hey, became P. Diddy. And yeah. Usher. Can you tell us about this experience? Because I can remember like it was yesterday, just watching. Man. Them. Oh, my goodness. Let me tell you that. You know what? I think that's what really opened the door because from that time, I think I was 21. So it was three years after high school. And I think that's what really pushed me and made me really go after entertainment. Um, yeah. Uh, what happened is I have a friend, uh, all my boys and people in college, they would be like, you look like Diddy. You look like Diddy. They even nicknamed me Puff. And like people will always call me Puff or Diddy. And then they told me about the show uh, becoming. I had never seen it. And I was like, all right, but we would always do like spoofs and sketches and stuff like that. So my friends and I, we created this whole video, like this scenario where I was puff. I had the toothpick and I'm like, yeah, take that uh, and doing all the moves and, and everything. And they were like, yo, we can get this to be coming. I have a homegirl. She's like a, she's a big casting director now too. Her name is Amber Bickham. And she was like, I'm going to walk this up to MTV. It was when we had VHS, ta uh, VHS tapes. And we took the VHS tape to MTV and I was just like, all right, I didn't think nothing of it. So then I got a call and they were like, um, yeah, we want you to come in for an audition. I'm like, OK, cool. This was like my first audition. I went in. I was standing on top of the table. I was like, yeah, bad boy, take that, doing like all this crazy stuff. And then I walked out and thought nothing of it. As I was walking out, the casting director chased me down and he was like, hey, make sure you don't go nowhere for like the next uh, month or something like that, or, you know, and I'm like, okay. And it wasn't like, we had cell phones, but it wasn't, I feel really old telling this story, but, <laughs> but it wasn't like now how everything, you know, like their social media, you know, somebody would have to call you. We didn't really text like that. So I'm like, all right, I don't plan on going nowhere. Cool. So, um, a couple of weeks go by and by this time I totally forgot about it. I was just like, yeah, I killed it. And I'm like, yeah, whatever. Um, so by this time, my homegirl, Amber, who's the casting director, who's the casting director now, she comes over and she's like, yeah, we're going to Michael Jackson's house like the next day. And I really believe in her. And the next day, MTV comes into my house and she lets them in and they do the whole becoming thing. And I'm like, yo, my mind is blown, you know. And um, so all that all my reactions and everything. All of that was real. Um, I was really if it was real or not, you know, it was you, real. It wasn't to your house, like you gonna be coming this. Like, yeah, ah. no, my homegirl, she she stayed over, so she let them in. And I'm thinking, you know, uh, and what's crazy is my room was like so junky, but that night, see, that's why I got me talking to you that night. You know, the Lord was like, you know, clean up your room, mm -hmm. and I cleaned up my room, got listened to the Holy Spirit, 
<laughs> and I cleaned up my room because MTV had cameras everywhere. And I, I was like, thank God my room was was nice. So, yeah, man, they came in like seven in the morning. Wow. Bro. Yeah, it was it was wow. wonderful. That was <laughs> what you say? I was saying the drool would be on my face. The press. Right. Exactly. Eyes. That's why I was like, oh, my eyes. Like all of that was real. And, you know, they taping me brushing my teeth and and <laughs> everything. But that was one of the greatest experiences ever, man, and just recreated. And that day, I knew, I was like, yo, this is what I want to do. I always want to, you know, I want to be on set. I want to be filming. I want to, you know, entertain people, make people laugh, make people smile, and just, you know, um, I, I feel like that is my purpose, and that is my calling. Yeah, definitely, and it, and it sure is. How? What kind of doors open for you once that was over with MTV? Oh. Oh, let me tell you about the doors that opened. None. <laughs> Yo, honestly, I'm going to keep it 100. No doors open. Like, I felt, I thought I was the man. I was like, but what it did do, it, it pushed me to go after um, entertainment harder. But, you know, sometimes when you have that big thing, you think everybody sees it and everybody knows you. And I was, you know, I live in California. So, People see entertainers all the time. I was a celebrity amongst my friends, you know, but um, nothing really major. Nothing happened after that. Um, not not for a long time. So that was 21. And I think I didn't do anything else in, like until two years later, maybe. That's when I booked like my first commercial. But then um, after that, honestly, and I don't know, I know you have your questions. But I think things really start popping like once I got married and, and had my family, and that's when the doors just start swinging open. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna touch on that too, sir. We're okay, touch on that. But with your star power that came after, right? Because you're a star. I don't care if anyone else sees it. If you know that you're a star, you are a star. I, I never knew that you did impressions as well. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. where did that come from? So you. You know, it's funny that that was something that I always did. And I think that's why I said um, uh, that's why it goes twofold where where entertainment found me, because impressions was something that I always did. I used to love to just mock, you know, certain things. And then growing up um, with my mom, like I would watch in Living Color and she would listen to like different gospel artists, like one James Cleveland, like back in the day. And he would talk like like this. He had a voice like this. So I would always do that to my mom and she would crack up my mom and my grandmother and, um, you know, watching the greats on a living color, uh, you know, Damon Wayne's Tommy Davidson, Jamie Foxx, um, uh, Keenan Ivory Wayne's like just watching them do impressions. It made it easier for me. I'm like, Oh, okay. So they would do certain things and then I would copy it. And I like to, I love music. So I'll listen to certain artists. And I try to sing it like them or do it like them. So that's one of the things like, you know, Keith Sweat, for example, he got that, uh, that nasal. So I'm like, baby, baby, I know. And then, um, you know, and some are easier than others. 50 Cent, you know, I could talk like 50, you know what I'm saying? Don't try to act like you don't know where we be at either. People talking about me on the Super Bowl, you know, I could lose the weight. <laughs> you know, so I just started looking at certain people and, and, and imitating them. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's just something that kind of, it kind of came naturally. I love it. Give us Elmo real quick. Elmo. Stacy, that's what Daisy says for me. Yeah, Elmo. <laughs> I love it, sir. I love it. I love it. I love it. I, love it. I, love I thought you were going to say something hard. I'm like, oh, shoot. Oh, no. No, I, I love me some Elmo. Okay. At the age of <laughs> I, still, I love I love you some Elmo. But you know what? When we come back, we're going to talk more about the commercial aspect of your career and how you involve your family as well. Think fam, don't go away. Back in a moment. Next, Javin talks about how he includes his family in the industry. Back in a moment. Hey, what's up? It's actress and singer Christine Horn, and you are watching The Michael Finkley Show. Boom. Colors. What the? Mm. Mm. Oh God. Mm. Mm. This one. Oh. Yeah, right, Marine. So I guess we don't stand for colors, huh? 
I'm sorry, sorry. I, I was starving. What was you eating on anyway? Let me put you on. This that Lucy's hoopy pie. Okay. Okay, okay. Hey, but uh, before you go, Marine, what, what can I get me one of those? Oh, at all the Super Target locations, Sergeant. Okay. And where can you get your chart sheet at in the morning? On your desk. As long as we track it. Everybody, welcome back to the Michael Finkley Show. Still chatting with Javin over here. And Lord, he is making me laugh. I'm having such fun with him. And it's kind of like a dream come true as well. Because you know when you're younger and you see these people on television, and now as an adult, you get this chance to sit down and talk with them. Thank you for making this come true for me. Thank you, oh, sir. Man, my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. And nowadays, we see you in commercials. You're that oh, yeah. guy from the commercial. How did that? commercial aspect of your career get started man um honestly it, it was something like i said that was something that i always wanted to do i think once um i got married and had a family um i always noticed you know growing up i, I wanted to be like the cosby show and you know i watched different things like that even though that wasn't a real family I was like, I want to have a family where we do that kind of stuff, where we have that camaraderie and we do things together. Um, so uh, I would just look online, like back in, I don't know, a while ago, whatever, when I had like my, my second child, I was like, you know what, we can do stuff together. We can do different commercials together. So I would look online and I would see different things. And I was like, okay, here's a Disney commercial. And I went and auditioned for Disney and or, or Disneyland. And the first time we auditioned, I didn't get it, but I was like, okay, but I'm gonna keep on going. That was fun. So finally, you know, I think after three times auditioning for Disneyland, we finally got it. And I'm like, okay, I can keep doing this. And then we did like a uh, green light, uh, you got the green light and we just kept going. And then by that time uh, we had an uh, agent found us or uh, yeah, agent pretty much found us and was like, you're doing this all on your own. I'm like, yeah. And she's like, well, shoot, I can I can get more for you. And I'm like, all right, cool, let's do it. So we signed with her. And then after that, that's when Burlington came. Hot Dye, Domino's, and just everything. And um, I'm like, yo, I can do this with my family. And they love it. And um, I just want to I wanna leave a legacy. You know what I mean? I want to show people that nothing is impossible. Because a lot of times, they do put families together and do things like that. And I'm like, nah, I want to use my real family. We're a real family. This is what we do. I think we look good. You know what I mean? So let's 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 make it happen. So that's how I got into it. Oh, you do look good, sir. <laughs> Thanks. Your father of four, correct? Yes, yes. Four children. Oh, you look good. How does your how do your kids feel about being seen on a national scale? Wow. They actually love it. I mean, at one point in time, my daughter kind of had a, a, a little bit of an issue. You know, you have jealous people at the school and, you know, they're like, oh, she thinks she's all that. But for the most part, they've enjoyed it. And I always tell them, you know, I'm not like Joe Jackson, even though Joe Jackson was great. I'm not going to get into that. But I don't beat them and make them and say, hey, you're going to do this commercial. You're going to do this audition. You know, I give them the option. I'll be like, you know what? Tell daddy if you don't want to do this no more. It's all good. You know, we'll just use the kids that want to do this or I'll find another kid and we and we can make it happen <laughs> because the age range of our family, like my oldest daughter is 25. So we have 25, 15, uh, 14 year old son and a seven year old. So it's it's a big range of us. So I'm like, all right, cool. If the oldest don't want to do it, we'll take your sister. If this, uh, you know, so we have a, a, a pretty, you know, pretty wide range of, of, of children. <laughs> Wait, 25? Yeah, the oldest is 25. Yeah, we're the same age. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm the same age, bro. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I'm like, you must have had it at five yeah. years old. Good Lord. <laughs> yeah. Wow, wow. So what's that yeah, next, what does that next tier look like for you? Where do you want to take this where, what you're doing, where do you want it to go? Well, of course, um, movies, television, things like that. And already, you know, there's been certain things that, that I've been doing as far as um, in the television arena and, and movies. So that's the main goal, man. Um, and to just uh, keep doing what I'm doing and um, 
uh, letting my children do, keep on doing what they're doing and leaving a legacy and actually helping people get into the entertainment industry. Uh, because coming from here, like I said, growing up, you know, I would ask people, well, how do I get into it? And they would give me like an answer. You got to get an agent. You got to get an agent. But I really want to help motivate people and help people's dreams come true. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's the next step. Yeah. Just continue to go, man. I'm, I'm telling you, please continue. And you have to watch his social media on uh, YouTube and on Instagram. Him oh, and yeah. his wife, they'll make you think, make you love, and make you laugh. I'm telling Come you. On. They Come will. On. How can the Fink fam find you on social media? Oh, my goodness. You can find me at wealthy underscore Jeff. Wealthy, W-E-A-L-T-H-Y underscore Jeff. On Instagram, I'm on TikTok at Wealthy Jeff, W E A L T H Y J E V. On YouTube, just type in Jevin Smith. I think if you Google me, if you Google J E V I N Smith, you'll pretty much find everything. But um, all my socials are at Wealthy under, Wealthy Jeff. Okay. Yeah. Well, speaking into because it, because wealth is just money. It's you know, I have a wealth of family, a wealth of knowledge a wealth of uh you know spiritual wealth all of that all of it all people of think it. it's just money it's no. more to it <laughs> more to it definitely definitely and all you your go and look like you have to shout Mike. <laughs> he was like oh well mm. yes praise him <laughs> because when you speak it it has to come to pass oh. hey you already and big on that I don't know how much time I got, but I'm big on that. I, that's that was one of the things that really got to me, got me to where I am by speaking it. You know, uh, I have like a vision statement for my family saying like, yo, this is boom, 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 boom. And everything that I've been speaking, uh, it, it's manifested. Amen. So you got You got to speak it and you have to write the vision and make it plain. And you can't just speak. You got to have make it plain come on. while you're speaking. You, come on. Exactly. I'm just cutting it short. I'm giving little tidbits. But yes, you are absolutely right. You can't mm -hmm. just say it. It has to be something behind it pushing it. Yes, so you have to believe it. And you know what I believe? Like, honestly, the more you speak it sometimes, but sometimes there's times where you can be speaking it and you cannot believe it. You'd be like, I don't really believe it. But the more you speak it, I believe that it, it'll fuel your faith and it'll build it up. Faith is a muscle. People don't understand. It's just like working out. The more you say it, boom, that muscle going to get bigger. Come on. I'm not about to preach. Come on, Bishop. <laughs> Bishop Smith. Bishop Smith. <laughs> yes, sir. There might be another caller for you, but I'm going to end it right there. Thank you for being on the Michael Finkley Show. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome, and you're more than welcome to come back at any time. All right. Think fam, don't you go away. Back in a moment. My name is James DeBose, General Manager, Head of Program of Fox Soul, and you are watching The Michael Finkley Show. The greatest man walking in his purpose right now. So make sure you tune in if you want to be blessed. Keeping your skin flawless and clean is important and I have the products just for you. Welcome to Mimi's Natural Pantry, where she specializes in homemade handcrafts, including rye and goat milk soaps, body butters, and sugar scrubs. All items are handmade products. All items have simple ingredients and are vegan friendly. In a world where you can barely pronounce many of the ingredients in your everyday products, Mimi's Back to Nature offers an alternative choice for those who are ready to get back into nature. Ready to order? Visit their website at Mimi'sNaturalPantry.com. All orders over $50 have free shipping up to 25 pounds. Hey everyone, here's the Inspire Me moment in 60 seconds. And today's thought is, optimism is a perfectly legitimate response to failure. There's always hope, even if you find yourself in a valley of despair, a season of regret, and at the bottom of the barrel. If you find yourself at a point of no return, then go back the way you came and rethink your path from a positive perspective. Just by making some minor adjustments in your point of view, 
can take something that seems unsurmountable to manageable and achievable just like that. So change the destiny by shaking things up a bit. Hey, that's all I got for today. Remember to do all the things on social media that go out make today absolutely amazing. As always, thank you for doing all the social media things such as like, comment, follow, subscribe, and share this message on all your media platforms. Even more, hit the bell notification so you never miss a video or an upload. Hey, this is RJ Smith. I play James on The Rookie on ABC. And right now, y'all are tuned into The Michael Finkley Show. Check it out. It's awesome. Let's get it going, y'all. On the next Michael Finkley. Famous is here. He chats with us about his influences in music, his amazing single 90s R&B, and he performs. Next Finkley. Monday. We have so much to talk about. We have so much to laugh about. All here on Finkley. Hello everybody, welcome back to the Michael Finkley Show. I hope that you learned something or were entertained by our guest today. Javon, thank you for being with us today. And we really appreciate you for all that you do. Keep striving, bro. Keep striving. Family, keep striving. Smith family, keep striving. We love you. Thank you so much. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Michael Finkley Show. Ring that bell for notification. We'll see you an email saying, hey, new content uploaded. Please listen to us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. And for more information about what we do on the show, visit our website, michaelfinkleyshow.com. Of course, U42. Visit us at U42.com. Our content there with some exclusive things coming your way soon, I promise you. Thank you so much for watching, and guess what? We'll see you next time. Have a good one.